Let's buy some land to build a family, that's a grown up flex And see a black man winning and get so upset This is generational, inspirational, integrative though On the rise vertically, working like I ain't made it though This is for my people, locker room speeches Listen while I'm teaching, nails trying like a kiss Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a re-up Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it Now we building assets before we splurge our cash We was talking about the dream dog. we heard y'all laugh Now they talking about the team and I heard y'all last I could never take the credit I prefer all cash Look, laughing at the crib Cause I done turned into a bank Probably turned into a mogul Before I turned into a saint Was just a man on his grind And I turned it into great Turn my struggle into hustle And you know I'm getting paid Let's go What's going on, Banker Cousins? This is Dr. Jake Taylor Jacobs A.K.A. The Biz Doctor And welcome back to the Power Bank Society With Iggy Nice Nick and Big Mogul. What's going on? Listen, in this show, y'all know we treat it more like a pod class. We like to give game, bring up tips, but we also like to give you strategies that you can take along with you in order to take your life, your business to the next level. So what we got, Iggy, what we talking about today? So listen, what we talk about today, we talk about these celebrities. We, we've been having conversations on the show about these bank crashes yeah. and what that means just for the banking. But now we're talking about actual people being affected by it and even Oprah got done up, did out. Oh, my goodness. You're hey, lying. Hey, you lying. Hey, Big Mogul, let us know what's going on. Break it down to us. What's going on with Oprah? So before we get into Oprah, let's go into our word of the day. Um, and our word of the day today is deleterious, which means harmful. The effect of not getting enough sleep can be proven to be deleterious to the teen's developmental brain. Listen, listen, listen. Hey, hey, getting a consultant... Uh, that it doesn't have actual practice or experience is deleterious to your future. So what you're saying is there's a lot of people who are on, in this online space teaching who are actually deleterious to the consumer because they don't have the proper practitioner in context. The deleterious effects of smoking on a person's health are <laughs> well documented. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why are you, uh, you starting to get a radio voice? Yeah, you yeah. To get boozy on. Yeah, hey, okay. Don't 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 play with me. Don't play. Don't play with, with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Syndicate this show. Syndication, <laughs> all because of knowledge, Nick. All right, well, yeah. what we got? What we got? Uh, a mogul. What's good? So before we get into the bad things that have been happening with these bank crises and the celebrities, we only talk about something really good. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Z just became a multi billionaire. Um, with the sale of the Duce, uh, his majority stock, he sold the majority stock for uh, $750 million. Um, when it first came through that he wanted to sell and get you know, out of the Duce experience, basically, um, he was offered $500 million uh, from the Duce partners. And he said, no, I want $1.5 billion uh, because he understood what exactly he, 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 he brought to the table. Got it. Mm -hmm. Then he went to j not jail, but to uh, court when they started, you know, kind of acting as if he didn't bring what he, you know, do what he did. Um, and they ah. settled on s 750 million, um, which now brought him from his previous 1.4 billion uh, to now 200, no, not 200, but two mil uh, two billion dollars uh, of, I guess, not net, but um, net worth. I think. So he had in bees. Yeah, yes. I think I think there's a good point that we 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 need to focus on. And mm -hmm. you know, we talk about this all the mm -hmm. time from going from good to great. Absolutely. And too many black and brown businesses, diverse businesses, because we ain't the minority. Let's be clear. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, talk about uh, it. Uh, a business owners of diverse backgrounds. Uh -huh. We get too committed and too caught up with the thing that we invested in or the thing that we uh, built from scratch. And so kudos to Jay-Z. For yeah. understanding the mechanics of business. Yeah. I want to be a part of a brand to build it and grow it. And when I'm ready to get out, meaning my heart's no longer in it, I don't want to market it anymore. I'm not really adding real value to it anymore. That's when I extract it because other than that, I will make the company go down in value versus letting it go ahead and ex uh, continue to grow with the people who built it already. And I think a lot of us mm -hmm. get so caught up in staying in the thing that we never exit for our profit. What do you think about that? Man, uh, huge, huge, huge shouts out to Jay-Z, man. And uh, also, uh, just to kind of add on to what you're saying, I shouts out to him for knowing his worth, knowing his value, yes, what he brought to the table. Because uh, he could have took that that original offer and been like, yo, like this is this is what it is, and you know, made the moves he needed to make. But because he understood what his value add was to the brand, because I'll be honest with you, good 
before Jay Z, I didn't know what Duce was. Just right. to be, just to be a buck, right? So understanding his what his value add is, and be able to have that counter offer and to stand on on his ones to be able to like, nah, this is what it is. This is what I need because this is what I brought to the table. I think that that's something that people should learn as well. Just because the offer come. And it's it's a good offer, and it may be more than than what you may have expected. Don't mean that's really what it's worth. So, uh, I shout out to him for standing on his ones and, and holding true to the value he brought to him. Facts: You got to ask for what you want. Ooh. If you don't ask, you might not get it. You're not you gonna know? get it. So he did know his worth, and he wasn't afraid to ask. That's what a lot of us are afraid to do mm-hmm. is just to ask. And I, I I tell you, like sometimes when I'm asking for money, I go lower, and they're like, "Oh, I thought you were gonna ask for this," and I'm like, "Dang, I should have yeah. asked." So I'm glad that you know Jay Z for sure. It's all that lesson, and you came to life row, not death row. Yeah, you did. Oh, you came to life row. We're gonna get you. We're oh gonna yeah, get yeah, you yeah, yeah. Yeah, we gonna do. Well, it. Hey, she gonna listen. Yeah. I don't I don't negotiate prices. You gotta talk. I'm not in charge of that. You gotta look, talk to Jake. Look, that's not my not, <laughs> not my department. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm quick. I'm quick. My to job say is it. to blow up your social media. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. You need to talk to them about Talk to the money people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> shout out to Jay-Z Shout out sure. to Jay-Z. Big shout out yeah. to Jay-Z. Also, with the Jay-Z, he um, kind of does what we do in a way when it comes to buying companies, uh, fixing them up, and then selling them. Mm-hmm. Um, so he just did the same thing with Tidal. Uh, most of us never knew what Tidal was prior to Jay-Z yep. buying it. That's facts. He bought it and sold his majority stake for $297 million. Um, you mentioned on a previous episode where a lot of people that look like us, they get into, like you just said, and they just get into it and they're just there rather than being able to get into it and then sell. You said you've met somebody uh, a week or so ago who was like, you asked them, so what is the plan? She was like, it's stupid for us to do this and not sell. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was, uh, that was two weeks ago when we talked mm-hmm. to uh, LTK. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me be clear. He doesn't do what we do. We go and find undervalued companies that have great products, but poor execution. Correct. He brings brand appeal to great products and companies. So there's two different, there's kind of two different yeah. focuses, although they, they both have their dynamic. Um, th- that's, I want to be He's becoming a part so that he can exit. Yes, he's coming up, coming apart to bring notoriety, mm-hmm. brand appeal, uh, um, eyeballs to the brand. And somebody else does it. When we come in, we coming in like the flood. We mm. clearing out everything, yeah. restructuring everything to make it better. I did want to differentiate that. But uh, thanks for bringing that up, Mogul, because when we were talking to an executive mm-hmm. um, at the company that we just talked mm-hmm. about, um, they were saying, if you're not in the game for the exit, what you in the game for? Right. And that's the biggest reason why we focus with our clients to go from good to great. Because good, a good company knows how to make money and how to um, uh, take care of their family, their surrounding you know, employees, and they run the money train until it's out. A great company is a company that is sellable. I'm building it for yeah. whatever exit, whether going public or being sold to a company that wants to make it bigger or tuck it into a bigger company. But I know that there is an exit, and it's very crazy to me that in our careers, when we work a job, we know our exit plan, we're retiring. <laughs> yeah. But when it comes to building a business, we're so hung to the business that mm-hmm. we don't realize the money is in the exit, not in running it. Yeah. Let's go. That was really good. That was really good. So now let's get into the the heartfelt part where people are losing money, right? Whew. So I'm going to start off with actually Sharon Stone, who... Uh, we sent out our prayers to you, Miss Sharon Stone. Uh, she's dealing with, uh, she just found out she's dealing with breast cancer. Um, but in this, she also just found out she lost half her money through the SB, SBV. Don't tell me that. That's the worst. She lost half, half of her money. She probably feel like everything in her life is. <laughs> She's she oh. been building her brand and her legacy for a long time, bro. It's for half of that to go. Who is Sharon Stone? I know I ain't the only one. <laughs> nope, because I just typed it in. You seen her before. She's a, celeb- a celebrity. She the say, Do you believe in love? That's not some Madonna. No, that's <laughs> Celine. Ain't that Celine? Celine? Dion. Oh, yeah. Celine Dion. <laughs> uh, she's an actress. She okay. also used to pose nude for Playboy. Mm-hmm. Oh, she been building all <laughs> so a lot of that oh. money came from wicked behavior. Oh, uh, you know the the, the Donald <laughs> T's of the world. And oh, <laughs> she's yeah, known don't say for his her name. Him gonna sue. <laughs> she's known for her role in Basic Instinct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't know what that shows, but Never I'm sorry seen. for you, Miss Stone. Still yeah. half, 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 half her money, though. right? Now, 
a big another big hit was Oprah Winfrey. That's she, the big one, bro. She stands to lose five million. Oh, I'm sorry. Five, five million. Five hundred. I'm wrong. Five hundred and ninety million dollars. No. Oprah lost five hundred ninety yeah, million. Yeah, bro. What? No. Dolores. Like cash. Cash Dolores. That was in Dolores. SBB? Dolores. Yeah. Dolores. Oh my! Listen. <laughs> I'm not going to say, I'm not going to use this moment to say, I told you so. But I am going to use this moment to say, that's why we talk about private banking, specifically for business owners and entrepreneurs. That surplus cash that you're not depending on to move your company forward needs to be in these insurance reserves that are contracted by law to be there when you need Mm. it. Yeah. I don't I don't I don't know how true it is, but word on the street says that that allegedly, she had, allegedly had to be physically restrained because when, when she found out she took that that hit. Uh, would you I, have to be physically yeah, restrained? Yes, I would be. That's no, what I'm when saying. Lost, when we lost three point five million dollars, I had to That's be what I'm saying. Physically you, restrained. You 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 wanna look at that because when you when you oh think about God. Oprah, you don't think about her having to be physically restrained. So just Ever. looking to what that actually meant to her. And she she worked. She worked a long time too. To how, how much is Oprah worth? Uh, I think it's upwards of two billion to herself. She, all right. So look, 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 I want to. I want to talk about a rarity. Okay. While you're looking it up, it is very rare. Two point four seven. Two point four seven. So that's what a third. A According fourth, to Forbes, uh, yeah. And her net worth is two point seven billion. All right. So let's say let's let's say close to a fourth of her net worth is in cash. It's 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 so two point four. Okay. 2.4 <laughs> Wikipedia, they about the same people now. All right, so look. Uh, so I'll, I'll say this. I'll say this. It's very rare that you'll find anyone who has at least a quarter million dollars in cash equivalents um, um, accessible to their net worth. In most cases, most people only have about 10% of cash access to their net worth. So when some, someone says, look, I'm worth a million dollars in assets or net worth, mm-hmm. they typically only have about $100,000, $200,000 of actual cash available to them at that moment. Mm-hmm. So to have somebody like Oprah, who's well well over $2 billion, yeah. she's worth that, have a half a million dollars in SVB, not included, she probably had in other banks, but I'm sure that was a large majority of her capital, um, to have access to that liquid, that does mean a lot. That's it's and it al- can change how she's living today if they don't fix that issue. It's almost mm. what she lost is almost double to what she earns on an annual basis. So it says she earns about three hundred fifteen million dollars a year. So she lost more than her annual earnings. Uh, I know she mad. She I feel like she I high. gotta go fight somebody for yeah. Oprah. Like yeah, because uh, she gave away so much stuff. She gave away cars uh, to folks. Oprah, books, you get a car. Somebody. You get a car. Supplies. Like, she put a lot of people on the map. It's I need like some cars the back. The bank bullied her. You hear me? Yeah. Y'all finna see o- Oprah finna start her show back. Look. Man. <laughs> she, hey, the Oprah show is coming back. Yeah. Or it's for sale. Tomorrow. <laughs> she, finna, she finna partner with Tyler Perry. Which one? <laughs> is it coming back or is it for sale? Because we might buy it. I don't know. No, but but figure that one out. It? Listen, out. listen. <laughs> heartfelt, heartfelt condolences Sorry, to Oprah. Auntie. Sorry, Sorry. Hey. Listen, I don't know, like, if you had stuff structured out the right way, you know what I'm saying? If you was privately banking the right way, yeah. I don't know, mm. but shouts out to your condolences. But let me you. tell you something. For those of you that are not in SVB hmm. and you're looking for a way to protect your surplus because your company and your lifestyle depends on it, you need to come holler at the bizcofirm.com because those are, listen, we're full service. We do everything from protecting your capital, showing you financial analysis on opportunities that you can make, as well as marketing and business development and overhaul. We're a full service consultant, biz dev, and marketing firm, and we, we does it all, okay? So I just want to let you yeah. know. Yeah, listen, listen. I wrote, I wrote a couple of curriculums on it. Listen, we, we can even help businesses grow without having to get them more customers, without them having to do more. We can help them produce more, become more profitable, become uh, more prepared to sell without yeah. even having to give them marketing advertising, which is a but big part of what we do. But on average, you know we do that. Any company yeah. clientele that Absolutely. we work with, they grow in profitability 15 to 25 Absolutely. And get 40% more efficient within the first year working with us. So Absolutely. You already know that. Yeah. You know. Talk it. We coming with it. Talk so, uh, talk. yeah, my bad, Oprah. Love you. I don't know about love because I don't know you, but I mean, but I, I can you, say you say, Oprah, say you're supposed to love everybody. You've done enough. Yeah. You've done enough uh, uh, for me to call you auntie. Hmm? But there are some uh, family members I don't love. Yeah. 
So you're, you're <laughs> in that cusp. You've done enough for the culture for me to say, I feel your pain because your loss is probably equivalent to my loss. And uh, so I know where my yeah. gut was in comparison to my head and my butt. And it was probably lower in yeah. the region. So. Yeah, my bad, Oprah. Man. He may not love you, but I love you. I can't you. say that. They say I'm that's sad. Too. I'm sad for Oprah. Also, <sighs> moment of silence. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I said also, <laughs> Prince Harry and Meghan Markle also lost millions in this same. Uh, I'm confused. Well. Oh, I know they mad as ever. I'm confused. They done opted out of royalty. What? What? Came out here and lost their money. <laughs> Listen, I'm confused. I'm out of here, Doctor Jake. Maybe you can help me understand as to why the God. why. They are part of the royal family and over Rockwell SBB. They're not part of the royal family no more. That seems a little weird. Well, first of all, be careful who you marry. Because <laughs> she'll have you disconnect from your inheritance. That's a bar. Hello. Secondly, I don't know y'all, so allegedly. Anything I say is alleged. It's alleged. <laughs> but what I would say is this. Um, too many people depend on the expertise of someone without learning their expertise. This is why we make sure our clients have access to educational tools that we teach, mm -hmm. whether it's finance, business, marketing, technology, automation, anything that we implement into a company, we also provide educational experience for them to actually learn the process of yeah. what we're doing and why we're doing it yeah. so that they can be able to protect themselves. And a lot of financial advisors want to keep their clients in the blind yeah. because they believe that that means that their client won't need them anymore. But in truth, in any consulting or advisory position, mm -hmm. the more educated your client becomes, and especially if you're the one that educates them, they're more inclined to stay yes. with you because it's they facts. know that you're not going to screw them. So facts. Hey, that's the effect of what's going on. That's absolutely fake. Let, let's take a moment because you know this is a live show. I want to go ahead and hop you in. Better not say silent again. I'm going to say oh. hop, hop in the chat. Oh, I thought you were about to say take another moment of silence. No, I was just going to say let's hop in the I chat. I ain't taking no moment of silence for Harry. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to hop in the chat or and say Marco. what's up to. <laughs> yes. This, <laughs> we, this right here. This, you see, you, you adding on to it. We supposed to be shooting for what time? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> One hour. Yo, so what's up to Behind the Lens TV? They say uh, salute to the master banking cousin. Peace to the panel. Oh, they say they and to the chat. They, they want me to show my outfit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Shouts out to Black Men's Wear, loving the convo. Shouts out to Black Men's Shouts Wear. Shouts out to Coach Tanisha. Our brand manager. Shouts out to uh, uh, Marlon King, uh, the the the, se the head of sales up there at uh, Get Baked. Uh, so this is a live show. If you if you if you uh, would just let us know where you're tuning in from, what state, what country, what city. Uh, in the meantime, y'all y'all see how fly Dr. Jakey is. They can't see. They he can't doing see his thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can't see how hey, fly. I like the way them chains fall ah, perfectly, dog. Right they the fall perfectly. Like an eagle. Can you see? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You looking hey, real. Hey, but, but uh, Nicky Ignacio, Rick? Ignacio look like uh, Iggy look like uh, uh, he look like a detective in Miami. Listen, I'm, listen. Will Smith oh, and Martin Lawrence, Lawrence, they, my, they my homies. I'm in the next one. You know they come out with four. I'm in the next one. Oh, okay. Hey, hey but, but I was just I was just gonna say, Nick, you can't show that L.A. today. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Got my they want me to on. show my outfit. I just left my yeah. chest at home because it was raining. Marla said, oh, he sing too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I do it all. Doc is clean. Yes, sir. So, uh, what we got, Mogul? We got we got people tuned in from all over the place, bro. Ohio. We got people tuned in from Tampa, Florida. We got people tuning in from Memphis, Tennessee. So, what we got for him, Mogul? So, I was going to ask a couple of questions um, <clears throat> about these banking uh crisis basically right to ask um anybody what would you do to, or to advise a startup that has had their money in svb um sbv i'm sorry uh what do you what would you advise them to do in this time of need um and in the future to keep themselves protected that what you said <laughs> what would you advise the startups who had their money in there there's over three thousand startups that had their money in sbb sbv what would you advise them to do now and in the future to keep their money protected First, what I would do, you got to liquidate, you got to cut down. You got to liquidate and you have to cut down because I'm sure that you're dealing with a lot of overhaul. And unfortunately, all the stuff that you promised a bunch of people, you can't, you can't control, um, you can't control the things that have happened. You just can't do it. So you have to liquidate. You have to scale down. You got to get back to the basics. You maybe can do a deferred compensation for those that, you know, uh, um, 
want to keep working with you and the deferred compensation means you're still going to pay them when your money get back. But um, for every month or for every year that they go without taking pay or taking half their pay or a quarter of their pay, you're going to make it back up. So you're kind of keeping it um, on your expenses or on your books to make sure that you cover them later. You're going to find those people. But honestly, look at this as a learning experience. You're going, you're going to have to um, uh, some companies, some of you are going to have to shut down. Um, or sell what you already have so that you can be able to kind of start back over. And for those of you that got enough capital to kind of, you took a big hit, but you got a, enough capital to kind of deal with it. What I would still suggest is for you to scale down. You got to let some people go on deferred uh, mm. or create deferred compensation. And when you let go, have the conversation with them and let them know that you want to hire them back, but then try to find them opportunities where they can kind of, you know, take care of themselves. But in this moment in time, you as the leader, your number one focus is to make sure that the company survives. Do not yes. deplete the company to feed people today because they'll never have anywhere to come back to to feed them tomorrow. Your number one priority is the business staying alive and well. But this is also a moniker and a reminder to you that when you're building your business is having a customer base versus mm. depending on investor dollars is going to absolutely shape up how you handle difficult times such as this. We've been through it ourselves. We understand what you've been through, but now is what's going to show if you really got it in you enough to be who you thought that you were. For sure. That was really good. That was amazing, Doc. So we're going to actually dive into our next portion, which is the business analysis of the day. Oh, oh you know, this, this is the part we're really waiting on. This this is the magic of the show, the business analysis. Cause this, oh, is butter. it my turn? Yeah, 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 Doc. This, this is where we get to see you do your thing, getting your bag in out of it. Okay, so <laughs> in, bag, in and out of it. In and out. Yeah. In and out now, <laughs> Doc. All right, so. And hey, we got people tuning in from the Caribbean, and they're trying to transfer these principles of private banking over there. Okay, cool. So, so here, here's the PBSDollarClub.com. I'm retiring from private banking. PBSDollarClub.com. Uh, uh, but this is what I will say. We're talking about the business analysis of the day. And the mm. focus of today is um, knowing the proper way to launch your business brand and product. And the problem that a lot of businesses have, especially diverse uh, businesses with diverse founders y'all like how i did that i, I like see it. you you like how i did that I I see like you, it. businesses with diverse founders we don't have the business economics or the business found of fundamentals or the business um background right to know how things should be done mm -hmm. first and foremost every product every brand and every business that you create should have its own celebration birthday. Ooh, talk about think, it. Think when you're launching a product, business, or, or brand, think of it like a celebration. Yeah. You're inviting your friends, your cousins, your auntie them, your cousin popo them, anyone that you can, that's what you need to focus on. So I'm actually going to talk about that. I just need the road mic. Actually, I may not. I probably can do it with the mic. I think it would be fine. Um, first and foremost, y'all got to understand, we actually talk about this. This is six steps to creating an indestructible product or a winning product. But this works for your brand. Everything that we teach y'all, listen, I have a manual for. We've done it. We featured it. We've case studied it. And today, I want to break down a couple of the elements that's required and that's important as we participate in growing this brand. Okay? So, uh, we go by our six phase process. This is in the curriculum. It's also in the wealth bundle, right, uh, Iggy? Correct. When they join the PBS Dollar Club, yes. they get access to the wealth bundle. With, it, with, with the if they have the option, if they want, they got to. the option yes. to yes. upgrade, right? Correct. And if they're inside of the private uh, private bank society already, how do they get access? It's a link that I posted. It's a link inside. that you yep. posted inside. Okay, yep. good. So, um, so this is only for the people that's a part of our private bank society. Correct. Outsiders can't get it. Nope. Got it. So. This is the six kind of phases that we kind of focus on as we're launching any product, brand, or service. We actually did a quick video about it today on how we make six figures every time we launch a product, brand, or service. Yes, we did. See how we did that? Yeah. So um, I want you to write this down because this is your learning period. So this six-phase process is called our quality assurance for product and services. So this is our quality assurance for products and services, making sure that the product that we're delivering is of quality it's in a proper market fit. Correct. It has the proper uh, niche focus. 
and the target people that can that you're targeting can actually afford your product services that you're delivering as a product. Correct. The problem that many of us deal with, especially when we're launching something, is that many of us open for business. We don't launch for business. Ooh, that was a bar. Name me one music album from your favorite artist that didn't go on a launch tour. I'll wait. Name me one movie that hit the box office that went crazy that didn't have a trailer tour or a screening movie tour or a screening or multiple screenings. Still waiting. And what most people fail to realize, even with a movie, Iggy, mm-hmm. Nick, and Mogul, even with the movie, they typically have six endings. Ooh, and yeah, they, yes, and yes. And they test those endings in yes. the market and they pull them to determine what it, proper beginning and proper end makes sense with the continuity of the mm. movie. Man. And in some cases, they even show different variations of the movie yeah. to determine which one had the biggest pull. So we're going to talk about those things in this brief moment that we can. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to our businesses, why is it that we open for business and just expect for anyone to come and purchase our products and get mad when they don't, when nobody even know who you are? <laughs> Bro, that's not funny, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and here's the crazy thing. Um, uh, somebody said, hello, no sound. It ain't no sound. Okay, you need to go to the YouTube. I'm sorry. <laughs> Now they made me mad. Mm. Uh, so it's a free show. You can't be demanding for free game. <laughs> All right, so you can't be demanding for free game. That's step number one on the launch. <laughs> so, <laughs> All right, so so when it comes to this concept, even Jesus had his launching tour. Talk about it. You know, I'm just trying to tell him. <laughs> So anyone who becomes something at something knows Mm -hmm. that when it comes to you launching, you're not going to see the benefits. See, a lot of people think that the works that even Christ did when he was on this earth, those three years between 30 and 33, he was launching for his exit. The ministry didn't really start until after he left. And I can go with Buddhism. I can go with all any type of religion. And show you the exact same blueprint and principle. So what we got to understand, there's a couple of questions that we go through that we follow. As y'all can see, Dr. Jake, we don't we don't shoot from the hip over here. We guarantee our success. Here's a couple of questions you must ask yourself first. Does your product or service solve a key problem for a specific group of people? See, I never trust anybody that's for everybody. Mm -mm. You can't. (laughs) <laughs> One more time Egg, no. I never trust anybody That's for everybody mm-hmm. That goes for your product and service too There's a specific group of people Now watch this You may have people in your niche Or that buys your product That's not a market fit That want to buy it because of a social class This is the same exact example When people got mad at Tommy Hilfiger mm-hmm. And all these other brands Because he said I don't make my product for the black market Mm-hmm because a lot of the black market were complaining about his prices. He said, I didn't make my product for y'all. Right. I made my product for the demographic that can afford it. It's not my fault that you can't afford this product and you can't make me lower my prices to fit your demands. Mm. And most of these companies, don't they say the same thing? Mm-hmm. Same thing. So you either have to come up to their niche or you got to get away from their niche. But either way, they're going to keep targeting their people. Number two, does your product or service have its benefits featured clearly and communicated? What are the benefits? Not what does it do? Yeah. What can it do for me? Exactly. A lot of people say, hey, listen, I got this nutrition product. And it has 97% of molecules in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And all we hear is womp. You know we black. So womp, 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 womp. She womp, talking womp, to womp. me like I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All y'all like that. Like that. Uh, and so we got a little soul to our womp. Yeah. But the thing is, I want, to, I want y'all to understand is that when it comes to your product and service and benefits being featured, c- communicated correctly, a lot of us get so caught up and we created this from scratch. This is my baby. They're going to accept it or they won't accept it at all. <laughs> How are you going to make somebody who you need their money to have the lifestyle you want accept the product in a way that they don't want to accept it? Mm. Right? So the only way that you can actually get people to purchase your product is if you tell them what it does. for. Listen, when I buy my cars, 
I don't go and ask them what's under the hood. <laughs> Does it drive fast? <laughs> Do I look good? And what I what what you think of me when I come out of it? Right. When I wear clothes, I don't say what is the seam stitch in it. I say, <laughs> is it good? Like I went today. I went and got new shirts from from Nordstrom. I said I need a good quality shirt, one that you know people like me would wear, and it ain't cheap. Mm-hmm. He came and saying, you know, we got these brands and we got this brand and we got a hundred count, and we got a thousand count, sir. <laughs> Bring me the shirt. I just want to see how it fit me. <laughs> Does it make me look good? Yeah. Does it keep my figure? Because I know I lost about 20 pounds by now. But the point that I'm making is, does your product have I'm a hating. fit? And guess what? You don't know that until you test it in the market. Correct. So it's until it. See, people launch products into or open products into the market, Iggy, expecting that it's not going to get beat up. I beta launch products into the market to expect for it to get beat up so that we can dial it in to make sure it fits what they want. Number three, is your product and service marketable, branded, and packaged nicely? Mm. What does it look like? So, like, when when Nick came on board, she said, Jake, you know, mm, I like your message. You've done pretty well. It's cute. It's cute. But, uh, (laughs) Jake, I don't like what y'all doing with that camera. (laughs) Somebody need to clean the back of their screen. It's not saying your, your, your imagery is not giving me what you've done, which means there's no connectivity and people are going to question your actual um, 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 uh, question, your legitimacy mm. when the two aren't aligning. Y'all got to understand imagery matters. Yeah. How you market it, how you brand it, how people represent you, how people look at you. Those things matter. So when you're launching your product and you're saying that it is finished, not beta launch, not pre to launch, but if you're saying that it's finished, they're going to compare your finished product to someone else's finished product and judge you accordingly. So we got to work those things out. The fourth question we got to ask ourselves is, is your product or service unique from other existing solutions? So many people, especially of diverse founder background, they be like, ain't nobody doing this. And all I got to do is go to Google, type in what they do, and I'm going to get four or five companies immediately. <laughs> exactly. In your area. Just because you don't know what questions to ask, old Google, mm-hmm. doesn't mean that nobody is doing what you're doing. Mm. So you got to figure out what other products and services are out there that are similar or just alike with your solution and what makes you unique. So if they got a big brand, you know they probably aren't niched down. So what niche can you focus on that can afford the services or products that you offer and focus exclusively on that? The next question is, is your product or service priced correctly? So many of us be like, uh, okay, they charge this, okay, they charge that, so let me charge something in the middle and I'm gonna try to figure it out from there. And then you don't price in the growth cost. You don't price in the fact that you're doing six people's job. So you're like, hey, I can just charge you a hundred bucks. But if you had a team, you know you would need to charge a thousand because you got to pay everybody. Mm -hmm. You're underpricing your growth. Those are things you got to work on. Then the last question you must ask yourself is, how is your product or service considered quality in comparison to everything else in the market? So the question you must be asking yourself is, Jake, How can I come to the conclusion to answer all of these questions? It's very simple. You must master these three phases of your launch. Go to the board, please. So there are there are three phases of a launch. The first phase of a launch is called the beta launch. In the beta launch, this is where you're collecting data. You're finding holes in your product or service and you're beating up your customer support to figure out how big you can actually, what can you handle? In the beta launch, you are not looking to make money. Come back to me, Mogul. Uh, In the beta launch, listen, you are not looking to get rich. You're not looking to get uh, to make a bunch of money. The whole purpose of the beta launch is to collect data. In most cases, go back to the board. You're only using this to get your product in the hands of users 
at dang near a free price. I don't care what nobody telling you. Some some of y'all be trying to price and you be mad that people don't want to purchase it. But in the beginning, what you need are customers who have used your product that can vouch for your product. You need to make adjustments to make the product better because what matters most is data and customer usage of your product service. Okay, so that's the first phase. And here's got to understand about the first phase. You got to tell people this is the beta launch of your product or service. You got to tell people that this is the beta launch of your business or brand. Why? They will not compare you to the other comparable options. They would judge you for where you are as long as you're open to that experience. Here's why. Because in the beta launch, this is where you get your Raven fans. They don't want to learn nothing. <laughs> then I told them to take notes. Come, come on over here. Y'all taking I told them notes? to take notes. They're not taking notes. They're down. not taking notes. Because I'm really giving them a the game. They're going to miss this and they're going to be mad about it. The beta launch is where you get the beta launch is where you get your raving fans. These are the people that are committed to all the growth nuance and the processes and the changes, the adaptability. In the beta launch, this is where you get the people that are ride and die for you. Yeah. So at the beta launch, you typically, if you charge, you're just charging for cost. You're not charging for a profit because their information, their testimonials will mean more to you when you get to the pre-launch. Yeah. The second phase of the launch is the pre-launch. And let me tell you, this lasts 90 days to two years. This is our research and development phase. The pre-launch can last 90 days to two years. Some of y'all are babies trying to say that you launch and you wonder why people like me molly whop you in the market. <laughs> because while you telling everybody that you're ready and you worked on this for three years, I'm telling everybody we in beta. And while we in beta, guess what? I'll, we're already outpacing your, your, your perfectly done. So they're comparing our beta to your done and they realize that our beta is per per better than your done. They're going to stop working with you because they're going to be like, well, by the time they get to done, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. Notice chat GPT. Mm. Mm. And what did I say on the what I say on that podcast, Iggy? Dude. A price is coming. Yes. But they just wanted to get a certain number of users on there so they can test it. Yes. To see if the, what the market says, make the adjustments, and then offer a price point to get more people on to pay for the new adjustments that need to be made. I'm just telling y'all how to build something that can be sold or something that can be great. And they're the, in the chat room saying that they are taking notes. Come on. They say oh, that. they yep. say they're taking notes. Okay. Oh, that's so, my bad. So pre-launch. legit. Pre-launch is when you add a little bit of profit, but it's not at the full price that you really want to charge. Some of y'all be, uh, y'all, y'all, y'all be, uh, mm, let me be G rated. Whew. Whew. Stay close to that say, mic when you're talking about Yeah, it. let me be G rated. Let me be G rated. Uh, uh, y'all be, uh, mm, I almost said, I almost, it was, mm, 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 okay, mm, 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 let me see, let me see. It's arrogant. I don't want to be arrogant. Uh, uh, <laughs> y'all be moving too fast trying to get to your end result. Which actually destroys any momentum that you Ooh. make. I'll just, I'll sit just on say it. that. Sit on it. Sit uh, on you want me to sit on that real sit quick? On that. So, so, so what I mean by that real quick is a lot of y'all are so quick in wanting to become a millionaire that you hit a million dollars in a rush and have to pay it back mm. because the product defaulted, your customer service trash, refunds hit, chargebacks hit, missatisfaction hit. So yeah, you made a million, but now you got to spend two years. Fixing the mistake that happened in the market because you wanted to move fast. Y'all know what my favorite song is. It goes, slow down, baby. You're going go. too fast. You got your hands and your feet on the gas. Oh, yeah. You're about to wreck your future. Running from that's NDRE. Let's go back. All right, so uh, pre-launch, this is when you want to make a little bit of a profit, but it's not for you to stunt. It's for you to reinvest to make your product better. So some, so many of y'all think that your product is done just because you're profitable. No, not yet. Because you need enough capital because you're trying to build a story of momentum. For an example, when artists launch a song, right? They typically launch this song in multiple markets. So by the uh -huh. time they hit a concert, everybody knows their song. Well, how can everyone know their song that's on a new album if they don't release it as a single? 
Oh. See, what y'all got to understand what the artists are doing, they're beta and pre-testing what the songs are in the market before they launch their album where the songs are going to be on. Okay. Facts. It I'm, makes I'm, people want to go get the album. If this song is good, I wonder what the album is like. Exactly. Come on. So... Uh, this is when you're reinvesting. So in this phase, you're using the information that you got from beta. You're using the data from beta to market to more people that are just like, as Iggy says, look alike. Mm -hmm. You want to start marketing to a lookalike audience to drive more traffic and increase your experience. So in this phase, you kind of got a proof of concept of the product, but now you want to perfect its perception in the marketplace. How many customers actually got it on their hand and you're still building your raving fans list. So now you got enough people in smaller markets. You're making enough money. So now when you go launch mode, now you're launching with the money that you made from beta and pre-launch to get actually in newspapers, articles, platforms, because uh, you got to pay to play, podcasts, all of those same things it takes to launch a album and a movie. Now you got the capital to put it in front. So what I want you to think about your product, your brand, uh, uh, and your business, think of them as... Um, a tester products mm -hmm. and you're getting people to taste your product until you're ready to take it to market. Mm -hmm. And these are the things that we got to understand. Like in scripture, it says uh, Judea, Samaria in the utmost parts of the world. It says, this is how you spread your message. Mm -hmm. Judea was considered your local environment or your local community in the area that you're closest to. So we're in Texas. So it'll be Texas. Samaria will be United States. Now you spread it amongst the country. Now, uh, utmost parts of the world, that's worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now you're in your launch campaign. So just like there are three phases in uh, giving a message in scripture, there are three phases to launching your business, product, or brand in the marketplace. And it takes a minimum of, of um, 90, it takes a minimum of 180 days at minimum to six years to fully for real launch a product or a brand. If you do it right, you're going to be closer to two to six years of fully launching it out. Just because you're making money doesn't mean that your product is ready for launch. And the more you tell your clients we're in beta launch or pre-launch, the more susceptible they are to working with you as you're working out the kinks. Yeah. And that's all for my business analysis of the day. Hey, man, uh, somebody get Doc a, a rag and some water, man, because uh, 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 he's sweating. He's he doing his thing. Listen. For those of you, uh, this may be your first time uh, tuning in to the Private Banking Society show. What you want to do is make sure that you subscribe to the channel, engage in the chat, and also share this with somebody today who you care about because they're going to love you tomorrow. Mogul, what we got next? We're going to go into our straight facts. Oh, okay. <laughs> and today's straight fact is that 64% of consumers and customers have made a purchase decision based on social media content. Facts. Um, and this right here tells you that in today's age, if you're a business and you don't have any that goes straight to customer, not uh, to business to business, but if you have a customer base, if you go straight to customer, um, you don't have a social media presence, you're probably losing out on more money than you're making. It's not probable. It's actual. I just want to say allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say allegedly and probably. <laughs> yeah, listen. Look, 64% is high. I was going to say, Nick, this you talk to him you have to have social media in 2023 <laughs> and a lot of people don't want it but they also want to run a business and stuff How? and i'm like no you need to get really familiar with social media because yes. i always tell everybody that we live in two different worlds reality and online mm -hmm. it's like they're moving simultaneously that's why you get so sucked on like you get sucked into social media and you lose time and then your whole mm. day is gone because you've been on so long it's because you're in a different world right quick. So you got to be on social media if you have a business point you, blank you, period. You, you got to be. You got to be on social media, right? Because I mean. when, 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 when Mogul talks about people searching and making buying decisions, they literally have a, a hashtag, TikTok made me buy it. Mm -hmm. So 
these are this is literally talking about people going on social media platforms, searching for products, seeing content about these products, and actually making purchasing and buying decisions based off the content they see on social media. So if there's a hashtag saying TikTok made me buy it, not think about it, not wonder about it, not question it, but actually buy it. That should let you know that you absolutely need to be on social media because social media is impacting the buying decisions of the consumer. It is hard to compete with a business who is on social media, especially those businesses. You, you're just getting started, right? You ain't got no customer base for real. You might have sold to two or three people. And it was all your cousins, right? Or, or you may have just, just got, got a couple of uh, 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 pieces of content up uh, on, on one platform, but you're not really taking it serious. This is why your business is suffering. This is why your business is more than likely failing because you're so against the grain of today's world, today's marketplace, because buyers, consumer, they're on social media looking for things to buy and if you can present your product or service on social media in a way that is compelling to the people who need that product or service you will win the majority of the time but if you're not trying to deal in the social media space <sighs> find somebody who is willing to do it for you there you go <laughs> and then you'll still be on social media without you technically having to the be the yeah there there's ways around this you have to get familiar though <laughs> I, I can't stress that enough. Everything's online. Like, so even you're online right now. So let me, right let me ask now. you, Nick. What? Um, what? Excuse me, sir. That that's my drink. Oh my bad. I'll try to take yours. I'm so <laughs> used to me, only one with coco coconut yeah. water. So Nick, what are the uh, different values of each of the social media platforms? Um, the ones that are, are present and available. <sighs> Let's see. Facebook connection, communication, and community. I mean so valuable because to me facebook is all your family and friends you know mm -hmm. when you can't keep up with each other i don't know about y'all but my family is about 150 plus it's a no, lot that of now. us it's a lot of mexicans in my family <laughs> okay so i'm gonna tell you right now that facebook is our best way to just do invites for everything got it um same for your brand like if i want this is gonna be great for the beta because if you're in Come beta, on, beta and Talk your family and friends are on there, you can start on Facebook. You can start your whole platform on Facebook, and now your friends and family are going to know automatically. To me, that's the best way to start as far as social media, just because it's already people you know. Starting in a warm market. Yeah, but don't get your feelings hurt when they don't support. Yeah, yeah. But you will then you will still find people who are willing to support who are amongst your family and friends because mm -hmm. sharing a post is free. You know, and sometimes, especially when you're in beta, you need to have stuff that's free. Ask your family and friends to share these posts for free. And that's if right. they have a problem, it is what it is. You know what I mean? You yep. know what's real and who not. Mm. Um, some notes, Twitter. Next, Twitter, real-time information and conversation. Man, Twitter is everybody's thoughts. Hold on. Okay, Twitter is everybody's thoughts. So you definitely want to hop on Twitter first and foremost. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Twitter's Twitter's value is providing real time information and facilitating conversations on trending topics. That's where I go every morning. What's mm. happening right now? Even in your area, it's so down to the T. Twitter is uh, definitely a platform that you should be on. It's probably the easiest because you're just sharing your thoughts. Um, now, as far as breaking the algorithm on Twitter, it's not the easiest. <laughs> you really got to be noisy and put your thoughts out there 24-7. It's not my favorite platform, but when it's social media, remember, all of these platforms have their own fan base. So there's going to be people on Twitter that are not on Facebook, that are not on Instagram, that are not on YouTube. Every platform has their own fan base. Mm -hmm. Instagram. Visual storytelling and creativity. Instagram's value is in enabling users to share their visual stories and creative expressions with their followers, just like TikTok. Um, well, I, I guess it's be the other way around because Instagram was a little different. And then, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yes, it's definitely somewhere where you can storytell and um, easy platform to share your brand if you go to a clotheslines page on instagram you see all their clothes it's like their whole portfolio that's what i consider instagram to be is my portfolio for everything that i do Dig that. linkedin the only platform that i have not mastered but i will uh linkedin is a professional networking and development app linkedin's value is providing a platform for professionals to network learn and develop their careers 
So anybody in business like we are should be on LinkedIn and learning the platform through and through. Mm -hmm. Um, It's like a Facebook for business professionals. So um, it should not be that difficult to navigate. Uh, They have where you can upload videos, photos, everything you need. But if you're trying to network, that's going to be the place to be. Like people are already expecting to network on that app. So it's not weird to DM someone and be like, hey, I like what you're doing. I want to connect. Can we collab? It's going to be the easiest place to do it online. So like, you know, you go to networking events in person and you don't want to because you might have social anxiety <laughs> and stuff like that. Now you can Talk go to LinkedIn. It. That's real. All right. So TikTok, entertainment and creativity. TikTok's value is in providing a space for creative expression and entertainment through short form videos, just like Instagram, except you don't get your portfolio. So you do have to be entertaining on TikTok. Um, to me, that's more of an advanced thing to do. You have to be willing to get on camera um, or make quality content without the camera. So, I mean, without you being present on camera, like with your hands and stuff like that. Um, Snapchat, instant communication and self-expression. Snapchat is a hidden gem. I'm going to tell you all right now. So you got your family and friends, right, that you can right. add. But there are also, there's now an algorithm on Snapchat where you can post and they put you like on a for you page. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's called, but I have gone viral on those things. Um, or whatever it's called. I'm not a Snapchat professional. I actually probably use Snapchat the least, but it definitely is an opportunity to go viral. You can still monetize on Snapchat. Like Snapchat is really doing some things. So I advise you to look into it. And that is all the social media platforms I have, except for YouTube. YouTube's value is in providing education and entertaining video content for its users. The best platform that I feel like is here in the United States. YouTube is the bread and butter of all platforms. You got to figure out YouTube, whether you're doing long form or short form content. I will tell you right now that YouTube is focusing on short term, short term content, Mm -hmm. short form content. So make sure you're creating and repurposing your videos on YouTube without watermarks and stuff like that from other platforms or making exclusive content for YouTube because YouTube is going to pay you in the long run. And when you post a video on YouTube, it stays there forever and you can monetize it for the rest of your life. So that's the great thing about YouTube. And I think we're good on social media platforms. Well, that was pretty dope, Nick. Hey, you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Oh, so I'm, I'm thorough. I'm thorough. Thorough. And y'all, let me and let me just say this, um, just as a precursor. Now, <clears throat> there are two elements to our uh, consultant, biz dev, and marketing firm. Uh, for those of you that have a little bit more time than you have money, right? you got about 20, 30 hours a week available to you to learn, to mm-hmm. implement. I would tell you to join our PBS Dollar Club, our private banking society. We call it the pbsdollarclub.com for less than, um, it was $11 a year, which is less than a dollar a month. Easy. Um, we have over 250, 270 hours of training, content on business, branding, marketing, sales, a communication, finance, you know, uh, understanding your financial statements, all the other cool stuff. And then um, for those of you that have less time but you need implementation, you can hire our, our, our firm and we do all things uh, um, internal uh, and external from uh, restructuring your organization to help you become more efficient, to help you with sales, pay ma- uh, paid advertisement, media buying, social media management. We do the whole gambit inside of our firm to help your business grow, which means you can focus on the main thing and we execute the rest and you'll still get access to the PBS dollar club to kind of learn as you go. But those are for the people that you have more capital than you have time for the people that have more time than you have capital. You can just join the PBS dollar club.com for $11 a year, get access a year, a year. Ooh. $11 a year. You get access to all of our information. And then you also get deep discounts on our technology that you need to run your business. So that's just a little kudos for those of you that are looking for a consulting firm that actually have done what they, what they're helping you with. Um, you can go to the bizcofirm.com, fill in your information as where you are with your company. Somebody will reach out to you for a consultation to figure out where you are. Let's go. Mm-hmm. What we got Mowgli? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So we're going into Iggy's, uh, favorite subject, favorite section, favorite 
uh, portion of the show, which is Smash Smash or Pass. Smash Pass, baby. <laughs> And today what we're going to be talking about is ways to scale a business or ways that people think of scaling businesses. Um, and the first one would be name dropping clients. Mm. Pass. Pass. Yeah, I'm a pass. On Only that. if they want it. They ask for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's two reasons why I don't like it. Mm -hmm. One is if you have a big brand as a consulting firm. When you put certain clients on your page or on your platform uh, to let people know who you're working with, it kind of skews what their real numbers would be if they work with you, especially if your brand is large. Mm -hmm. So like for us, when we work with a company and they tell people that BizCo, Dr. J, Nick, Iggy, any of our team are working with them, they'll immediately get notoriety or credibility within the marketplace, get sales that may not be as pure as if we implement it into it. Does that make sense? That means mm -hmm. that we're a company that drives a lot of traffic. So Correct. if they see a bunch of sales, they'll think that it's us or that firm when it's not, when it's really, well, think, they'll think that it's them or the firm's implementation and not take into account yeah. that it was you working with them that made them more credible, that helped them make more money. So excuse that. The second thing is, um, I come, y'all know, I come from a financial background. Correct. And in the financial industry, you cannot really disclose who you work with. Mm -hmm. That's why nobody ever sees testimonials, right, of our clients starting banking policies. Because when it comes to finances, those things are a little sensitive. They sometimes they want to keep it from their family. Sometimes they want to keep it from their business partners or their spouse. <laughs> what they have in order. <laughs> So as a financial strategist, specifically in the private banking world, I can't depend on, hey, I had these celebrities or these NBA or NFL players or these executives come and be clients of ours because now it's working and vice versa. I'm pretty much baiting their brand to get more clients when it's not a true thing that what we do will work just as well for them and their business. So it brings a false pre uh, pretense that some, uh, somebody else got a $2 million return from working with us while somebody else only made $100,000 and they think that it didn't work. But in scopes of percentages, it's around the same number. Does that make sense? Yep. So I don't like that. And I like what we've done in the private banking and finance world, which was we want to prove that we are the best without having to use our clients as bait. And it allows for our clients to keep their competitive edge. If we go and say we work with such and such and their competitors say, wait, that's how they ate at the market. They're going to come and want to try to work with us. And it makes this this thing to where now we got to decide who to work with because they're in the same market and the same demographic fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And so that's we kind of like to keep those things quiet. Why do you all uh, say pass to as well? One. Uh, I, I really like to to challenge myself and challenge the team and challenge us to be able to go out into the marketplace, place, identify a company and be able to help that company uh, because I understand that past results don't guarantee future success. Talk about it. So just because we were able to do something, even if even if we find a company in the same niche, right, with the same with similar product, servicing a similar client base, similar customer base, that doesn't mean we're going to be able to get the same results for that client. So there's no need to even talking about that. We got a 200, 200 point audit that we put each business through to understand that business to, 200 see, points. to see exactly where they're they're up, where they're down, where we can help them. And based on that, we determine how well we can help the client actually looking at that business because I've been there. I've been there to, to leverage past clients' results that, that I've gotten to get new clients. And then looking at that client and, and actually diving in, wasn't able to get the same results. The results are still good now, right? I'm, I'm not saying I, that they flopped, but they weren't, weren't to the level that I expected them to be based off my past results. So understanding that we, we have to look at each business, audit each business to understand what it is they do, what where it is they're, they're high, they're low, they're failing, where it is they're efficient, inefficient. So uh, it, it doesn't matter what we did before. It doesn't matter who we help, what results we got them, if we aren't able to help the business that is currently looking for that and, help. And let me add to this before you give your social media expertise, okay? Mm -hmm. um, I think you said an amazing point, Iggy. People get so caught up in what this person is doing. 
So if you are a lactician, uh, what loctician? If you are a loctician, <laughs> lactation, and you're in a, and you're in, and you're in a demographic where there's not a lot of locks. Mm-hmm. Say you're in a predominantly white demographic. Okay. Us pr- producing you two million dollars in revenue is going to be different than if we got with a loctician in Atlanta, mm-hmm. where's a bunch is it's a, or Miami. Mm-hmm. Where dreads are a thing, locks are a thing. Yeah. So, our positioning and what we have to do would be two total different phenomenons mm-hmm. in order to produce a said result. Correct. This is why when we do our two hundred point audit, this I want to be clear on what we do. These are this two hundred point audit takes an hour and a half. Right. For us to de- determine a formulaic grade mm. that our system creates that we built. No guesswork. From all of our mistakes and successes in business from many different industries that we've been in that we've killed as a company prior to becoming a consultant, biz dev, and marketing firm. So based on this 200-point audit, when we determine the grade, we only deal with the clients based on what their grade is based on what matters most. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And from there, now we can say, what do we need to do to make you more efficient, to make you seem more, to make you more brandable? And a lot of companies think that it's the marketing and the branding that they need. Some of them are actually getting the traffic that they need, their efficiency of closing the deal, service the deal, and keeping customers long term is their issue. It's not the getting new clients. But another client, In the same industry, with the same product, they may be extremely efficient. They just aren't as visible as the previous client. So our strategies will be different. So it wouldn't be fair for me to say we work for this with this company and increase their revenue when I got to go to another company and it's a total different workload. Mm -hmm. It takes more time to reestablish than it did the other. Yeah. That's why I like to say when you're in the consulting or, uh, or or a biz development or advisory space, stop depending and leaning on your past clients mm-hmm. to get you more clients. Right. Mm-hmm. You need to be so daggone good mm-hmm. that people are just attracted to you for your expertise. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're hitting something that they know that they need before you know dealing with that and doctors do a really good job at that too correct you know if somebody came in they're having a hard time having a baby say it's beyonce they can't use the fact hey we help beyonce make blue yeah exactly that's not as sensitive and <laughs> we need to think go. of these businesses like these business owners babies so what do you think uh when it comes to that uh nick yeah that's exactly leaning towards what i was gonna say anyways um the world is so small so you could be helping someone and let's say they don't like the person that you're about to help you know what i mean and just because the business world is small and if we're we're in a big city and Mm -hmm. the business world is small you know Mm -hmm. so and a lot of my clients are like similar to my friends clients like we all have similar clients so imagine if they don't like each other and now it takes away from your business because you don't help somebody out and grow their business successfully but now somebody is upset and doesn't want your services now it's hurting me just because. So that's why it just needs to be confidential. Yeah. This isn't yes. personal. It's business. That's yes. right. You know, so it has to it has to strictly be confidential. Um, another reason is is sometimes you can go to these consultation websites, right, where people are offering some sort sort of marketing services, mm-hmm. and you see all the brands they help, like Coca Cola, uh, whatever big brand you can think of. That will get you anybody intimidated with a small business. Like, oh, man, I know they're going to charge me an arm and a leg. That's right. That's right. You know, do I even have what it takes to even be approaching these people? And you know Mm. you're going to be let down because you know the price is going to be high because they're going to be like, yeah, we can help you for 70 grand. 70. You know what I'm saying? Which is probably pretty low if they can really help you. In comparison, yeah. Yeah, if they can really help you. But there's a lot of companies out here that really can't help you. And they're just going to be like, here, follow this and have a nice day. Thanks for the 70 grand. And, you know, and, and you can call us anytime. And we'll tell you how to post it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and here's here's the last part. There's a lot of people that work with brands by way. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Exactly. Ooh. Can we talk about this? Yeah, man. We got so, to. So you Don't helped. be arrogant, but just talk about okay. it. Okay. <laughs> so you've helped a brand by way of of someone else closing the deal. Mm-hmm. So um, 
Uh, I'll give you an example. We have a business partner who um, um, we do a lot of back end for. Mm -hmm. They got a big deal on the table that we're aiding them on. So technically, we could say on our site that we're helping a Fortune 500 company. Right? Facts. Technically, by way of somebody. Although that company may not know, mm -hmm. we're doing the back end work. So you got to be very careful with that. Or you, they, they may have made one post or something. <laughs> they talked to somebody one time and gave them advice, which was an associate of a big brand. And they say, well, technically, I have worked with these big brands. So that's why I don't really like those companies that lean too heavy on who they've helped versus I'm the type of person, I don't give a dag rat who you helped. Can you help me? Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Folk, I, I think that, that a lot of businesses um, that lean on past not, results. Not the lean. Not the lean. They lean in on past results, you know, just a little, uh, a lean back. little prop up. I think that they might be in, in fear that they aren't able to produce for that ne next client. Also, like it's it's really it's really hard to even like I said, even if in the same niche. For example, Nick, you you can you can you 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 working with a tattoo shop right now that you blew up to millions. Yes. Right? Zero to millions of dollars based on social media content. You have an idea of what it takes to grow a tattoo shop and to get them exposure. But if you decide to work with another tattoo shop, just because you got this tattoo shop result doesn't mean that this tattoo shop, you're going to be able to get the same results. Their location is going to vary. The, the, the type of the, the quality of work that the mm -hmm. artists do in there is going to vary. Their prices are going to vary. Right. The, the, the reviews of people who have already come to that is going to vary. So saying that just because you got this client results in the same niche doesn't mean that you're going to get. The next client results. So understanding that it's based off the skill set that you have is based off you being able to implement that skill set across the board. Because we we didn't got companies. We didn't been in what six different five different industries that we done took to. Oh, that, yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying. So just we have the experience big of brands that we big brands. built. We have the understanding of how to do that, but we approach every client. Every situation is a new situation. Understand that I talk about it a lot of doing market research and product research on the client, on the product, on, on who you're targeting. Because before you spend a dollar on paid advertising, before you put together organic content strategy, you have to know who you're talking to. You got to be clear on the message that you're providing and the, who, who you're providing that message to. Otherwise, what you're doing. Yeah, and that market analysis is very key because mm -hmm. you could have blew up a brand Right when like everything was right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you're getting more companies in that same vein. Now, when I say everything right, I mean markets right. They got an amazing team mm -hmm. at the tattoo shop. They got a they got a cool little squad. Oh, it's solid. Right, it's solid. Yeah. But you can be with another tattoo shop where they got internal envy with each other. Yeah, Ooh. exactly. So they're like, "Well, can you help us grow?" I could. But do you have these things in place? Mm -hmm. That's why when we take on a client, we do an audit. Yeah. I need to know exactly where you are. And we do an employee audit to determine uh, where they are so that we can see if we're the right company that can help you. Because we don't take bad companies and make them good. Mm -mm. We take good companies and make them great. And the good company is not predicated on how much money you revenueing. It's predicated on the values that we see in that audit to let us know if this is a brand that we can actually work with or is this just somebody we want to penny pinch the money out of right. and say, ah, it was you and not me. And that's what a lot of these firms do. Mm -hmm. They just want to get your money, but they have no real understanding of your business model to determine if what they have on staff can actually help you grow. Yeah. Mm. And those that. are bars. Yeah. Bars. All right, How you all like right. that there, Mogul? <laughs> I like it a lot, but y'all are long-winded. <laughs> that was ten they, minutes. They, y'all. So you going? You 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 wow. not big so mogul no more. You like wow. medium mogul. Nah. Now. So we, wow. I, you medium I gotta make mogul. Make sure that we stay on 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 track. We okay. say we're gonna now do an hour. Bad. My bad. My bad. Now you want to lean back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next uh, Smasher Pass is just um, just pumping more money into marketing. 
just pumping more money into marketing, is that the thing for for these companies? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. No. Pass. That's going to be a, a, a pass. Why? A super duper pass. Let me tell you why. Because I've had clients bef before who I didn't understand the need for the audit then because I was super marketer, super advertiser. I knew I can get you results. And so I brought on a client and I was able to bring them results to their business, increasing the, the amount of products that they were selling and increasing their revenue. But on the back end, they couldn't fulfill those orders because they didn't have the infrastructure. They didn't have the staff in place. They mm. didn't have the systems and the processes in place to be able to fulfill those orders in a timely manner. So they actually had to tell me to stop running advertisements so that they can catch up on the back end, deal with what people are asking for refunds and chargebacks because they weren't able to fulfill the orders. So just increasing your marketing and advertising to increase your revenue, that's a that's a that's a huge that's a huge pass. Now, now if you don't have if you don't have the infrastructure in yep. place, then if 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 right now you're running your business and you're doing ten thousand dollars in sales a month and say that ten thousand dollars in sales it comes from you moving a hundred units a month. Right, and you increase your 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 revenue. You increase your sales. You go from ten thousand to twenty thousand. Now you're moving two hundred units a month, but you still have the same infrastructure, the same staff, the same process, the same procedures in place for that that hundred product move. You're going to be outside of your 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 operating zone. You're going to be uncomfortable, and you're probably not going to give your your customers the quality of service they need, which is going to bite you in the butt in the long run because they're going to be charging back. They're going to be refunding products. They're going to be telling other people to. You not what you about, and all you and because the only thing you did was increase your marketing advertising without getting your business ready to fulfill that. So that's the, we we talk about it more inside of the PBS Dollar Club. The difference between growing and scaling. What you mm. got, Doc? What he said <laughs> because uh, y'all see he passionate about that because a lot of us specifically founders of diverse background, mm -hmm. we think that the solution is marketing and branding. And it actually hurts your brand even more when you generate a bunch of leads in marketing that you cannot fulfill because negative <laughs> press about your business travels faster than positive press. Correct. So when they say, oh, I, my product was late and I didn't get on time or they didn't fulfill it, now you spend more money cleaning up your mess than you would have spent in investing in making it more efficient. And let me tell you something. Slow, smooth, slow, and efficient will always be faster than fast, unorganized, and, and janky. Hmm. Smooth, slow, and efficient. This pace will always be faster than... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you got to call the cleanup crew. So, so grow with pace. Develop with pace and use paid advertising to back mm -hmm. what you have proven mm -hmm. in organic marketing and advertising. Woo! Cause that's 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 a big deal. Though. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said it because people will ask, should I use organic marketing or should I go paid marketing? Like, which one should I do? And the answer is, you should do both because your organic marketing is going to prove your concept. Yeah. And so before you put a dollar behind anything that you advertising, you need to know that it's going to sell. You need to know that the content that you're produ producing actually connects and impacts the people who you're trying to connect and impact. Because if, if you're just going to put them dollars behind advertising and you ain't got nothing in place, you're wasting your money. You, mm. if, if you haven't proven it organically, you are wasting your money. Not only that, when you get when you get to going organically and you get the, those the, those sales coming in, and you have the proper tracking in place, meaning you have a pixel on your site, meaning you you are you are building uh, audiences in your advertising platform based on the engagement of, of your platform. How many people come to your platform to view it? How many people message you? How many people liking? How many people are sharing your content, saving your posts? When you're able to look at that those analytics from your organic. Oh, you done skipped the line when it come to pay. Because I talk about data research so much. That organic yeah. aspect is that data research. Yeah. Is that mm. market research. Because you've proven it organically. Now when we go to pay, now you mm. now you now you put yourself in a position to make sure you get two, three dollars on talk. every dollar that you spend on pay advertising. Mm. Yeah, so so and Iggy has Shown that plenty of times. Listen, I can pull it up right now. Don't do it. Don't mm. do it. <laughs> but but th this is what this is what I want to say. Um under a hundred thousand a year, self-learning, PBS Dollar Club, eleven dollars a year, 
270 plus hours of training on business, banking, finance, marketing, and advertisement. And we will have a social media a master class with Nick um, coming soon, only for the cool. PBS Dollar Club members. Dollar Club. Be lit. Um, number two, after a hundred thousand, this is when you do a hybrid. You get consulting. You come to us after a hundred thousand. When you get consulting with a little bit of learning. Mm -hmm. So this is when you have it to where okay, give me instructions. You're limited on capital because what a lot of people don't realize, we can help any company from. Millions of dollars mm -hmm. to 100000 a year because we bill hourly. Mm -hmm. So if your company is small, you won't need us as much hourly to facilitate mm -hmm. things. So it will be more guided practice than anything, over 100000 Now, when you get past a quarter million to, uh, toward quarter million to a million, that's when you want to pay for consultation more on a retainer basis. Where you have them actively, you can hit them up more regularly mm -hmm. to be able to help you miss uh, miss all of those mistakes that you are that you could potentially be having. Um, and if you're really forthright, you probably you know some of you will commit earlier. But that's kind of the blueprint and the guideline to your growth process, especially when it comes to that, because there's a lot of things that you have to and must know and master, which 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 the PBSDollarClub.com will give you the basis of knowledge. So that you can be able to properly guide your business in the right manner. Because a lot of us think that we're great CEOs when you're really just good at your product. <laughs> and now you build a company off of your specialty of knowing the product. You're a product developer or you're a salesperson. And you don't know any of the other facets of your company, which makes you vulnerable to your competition yeah. who's out there really practicing or mm -hmm. hiring people like us to beat you out the market. So there's, there, there's people in, in, the, in the live chat and they want to know. If they if they want that type of service from us, where should they start? Where should they go to start that process of of uh, getting the screening or or going through that? Where, where, where should where should they go? Uh, they should go to if, if they want us to actually help them. Yes. Um, first of all, I, I must say this: we don't work with everybody. Absolutely. And, not. and I don't say that cliche mm -hmm. um, because there's a certain type of staff or founder or owner that we must work with that is willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. Number two. We're not looking to work with anyone that wants some magical, you know, rabbit's foot. Make me a million make tomorrow. Make me a million tomorrow because they understand that there is a process and system to it that they must mm -hmm. adhere to. The third thing is we also want a founder or a CEO that will take time and watch some of the videos that are inside the PBS Dollar Cup to give them an understanding and a synopsis of what we're doing ourselves. So if you meet those things. And you're making over $100,000 a year. Go to bizcofirm.com. When mm -hmm. you go to bizcofirm.com, you're going to see a section mm -hmm. that says, do you want more revenue in your business? Okay. When you go to do you want more revenue in your business, you're going to fill out an, anal uh, an analysis for your business. There's a questionnaire. When you answer that quiz, it'll let us know really where you are from that process. If you make it, you'll get an email with that email You'll be able to get um, a 15, uh, a 30 minute consultation to kind of figure out where you are to talk about the quiz you took. And then we will also um, then take you through. If you pass that, we'll take you through our 200 point audit from the 200 point audit. Then we will start the process of working with you. The reason why we operate like like that <laughs> is because there's a vetting process that takes place. Mm -hmm. um, there's an expertise that we must feel like you have or knowledge base that we feel like is comparable to what we can deliver, those are the people that actually execute the best. And I'll give you one of our clients, not telling you their name, not telling you their brand, not anything, but this is a client that was doing about 1.2 to $1.6 million a year. We start working with them in June, May, June of 2022, toward the end of the year, um, and they grew 15% in revenue and a gross profit revenue gross revenue profit from 1.6 the year before to 1.9 they saw 15 percent less traffic which means less people that came to their brick and mortar their business they can only sell products in their state that has a specific certification so they can't work with a bunch of people they can't go global so they originally thought they needed marketing and branding we wanted to show them that you needed an efficiency model. 
We make them more efficient. They became more profitable while seeing less people. That is the result of what we want to do. And in that process, we loved working with that company because their staff was second to none. And the leader of that company was all for doing all of the major work that's required in order for us to actually execute what we need to execute. It's much like your lawyer, right? Your lawyer can't run your business. Your lawyer gives you recommendations that you must follow, but the effects of you not following ends up costing you more money later. So the bizcofirm.com. Bizcofirm.com. Put that in the chat. We, I was trying to drop, but you know, YouTube be blocking the links. The bizcofirm.com. Yeah, the bizcofirm.com. Shouts out to everybody because I, I see some people that's in the PBS Dollar Club right now taking action and actually getting the wealth bundle, which has the private banking blueprint, the private banking blueprint challenge. We are six, six steps to creating a winning product, the private banking workbook, all included uh, in there. And people are taking action right now inside the PBS Dollar Club to uh, get action. So shouts out to all of you. If, if you're in a PBS Dollar Club right now, you can go ahead and jump in there. Uh, and there's a link I just posted in pen and you can go ahead and get access to the curriculum so that you can follow along with that inside of PBS Dollar Club. Go ahead, Doc. Uh, and let me just say this. Uh, Ray's music channel, uh, he he said, man, most people can't, of our people can't afford $500 a month, bro, mm -hmm. to do private banking. This is the difference between me and everyone else that carbon copied what I teach. I never teach to start private banking when you broke mm. right. your last comment ray and that's what it's I, about i do want to say you start private banking when you've mastered certain skill sets that produce you surplus cash that you do not need to survive talk about it it's the surplus cash surplus that you build your private banking reserve off of surplus so if it's already tight for you just get basic insurance to make sure that your family is covered in the expense that you die because private banking is for those who have surplus, not for those who are living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. That's the concept that I want you to understand, which is why I tell people, increase your value in your business or your job. Mm -hmm. Live on what you're already making so that the surplus capital that you're generating mm -hmm. can take care of debt and other expenses and build your reserve. What are you about to say? I was going to say there are a lot of things, too, that we spend money on that is equivalent to $500 oh, a, a month. Too. Talk no, about it. And, um I, when I started, when I got in business for myself, I was like, dang, a lot of people aren't going to be able to afford what I want. And then I started asking. And then I realized that people had the money that, yeah. you know, they had the money to invest in social media. And I found those people who were doing it. So um, it's definitely possible. Like I know my shoes, they're like $200. I told myself yeah. this year, I'm not going to buy any shoes this yep. year, you know, because I'm trying to save that That's extra right. $200 a month. Yep. So if you want it, you will find a way. Just got to figure out what you're doing. And I want to I want to add this uh, to what Nick was saying. Um, the reason why I say to to find a way to generate more capital first, because an e the easiest habit to start is the ability to make more money. Mm -hmm. And then when you make more capital, when you say, OK, any extra money I make, that is for this life. Mm. And then you begin to start dialing back down and becoming more efficient. So you're absolutely right. One thousand percent. Most of us, but most people don't have the temperament that you have to be real with yourself and say, I got the extra cash. I'm just bugging. Mm -hmm. So because most people are stuck on habits, that's why we say generate surplus, because when they see the surplus, they're more motivated to clean up their their cash flow uh, that they're overspending and see how much extra capital that they have. Because the truth is there are more people that have more money mm -hmm. available to them. But the thought of that going somewhere else and they can't see it on their body or uh, see it going in their stomach, mm -hmm. it will make them feel like they're moving backwards. Right. So we create new capital, create new habits with the new capital, what makes it easier for you to break the old habits mm -hmm. because you've already developed them with the new capital. So it's the, it's the, it's the juggling of both because everybody is not as disciplined as you are to say, no, nah, I'm cutting Dig that, off. dig right. that. I like that, man. You listen, y'all dropping gems, spin game. Mogul, what we got next, Doc? <laughs> so, <laughs> y'all basically <laughs> at, answered the other three that I had. All right, so we don't need it. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, perfect. They said, Nick, we loving your energy. Okay. Thank we you. do, too. Thank you. But what I'm, I, I am going to ask is, let's say you did, um, let's say, not do the six steps that we teach, right? And you, 
you you did name drop a client and it, it, it worked out wrong for you how would you come back and like kind of save that that experience you said say we say that question again say yeah. you didn't use the six steps that well we maybe it's because you're leaning back like you're cool and i can't really hear but maybe the mic right here so say that you name dropped right and mm -hmm. you did it prior to reading our six steps right um how would you go about cleaning that up stop stop it pause Roll with it. What did it stop? Drop. drop, drop shut them down. Over. Oh, <laughs> oh <that was> <laughs> but the, I, I would, I would stop <laughs> everything that was going on right then. I would go back and get the six steps because you can't fix anything unless you know where you went wrong. Ooh. And if so, you gotta, you gotta take that on the chin. You gotta take that L on the chin. You gotta take that loss. Understand? You messed up. You skipped the process. Yeah. Go back. Figure out what it is that you did wrong inside those six steps. Once you understand that, now you can look at actually fixing it. But you've identified that you you messed up. Now you need to get the solution to your problem, which is in the six steps, which you get access to. You have the opportunity to get access to inside the PBS Dollar Club, and it's for literally pennies on the dollar. Literally. Pennies so, on yeah, the dollar. So, yeah, stop, rewind, refigure, six steps to create a winning product, go from there. Cause if that, that, that's all I got, Doc. I don't have nothing else to say. You hey, said. we done. Ooh. <laughs> all right. So we are on our next one of my favorites, actually, which is the back and fail of the day. So today's back and fail of the day um, is a little funny to me. Uh, and the question is, do you hate wokeness or the wokies or the most woke people in the world? Do you do you hate wokeness? I feel like it started in a place that was good and productive, but it's just gone into a place that's crazy. And if if you if woke people be unresearched, woke people be sleep. They be unresearched. They be snoring sleep with like no expectation of waking up. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I I think that that like you said, it, it's it's comical, but. And when it when it when woke first was a thing, when it first like the the term was being associated with the culture, it was for somebody who was aware, you know, somebody who was coming to understanding of things going on. Now, it's just and got appropriated and all type of stuff. I don't even know what woke mean no more because everybody be snoring. Well, it's funny because <clears throat> being woke by definition is basically the practice of culture words, like you just said. Um, and gl I'm glad you actually just said that because. Uh, a conservative writer named Bethany uh, Mandel, who was on a panel earlier this week, she was asked uh, about her hatred of wokeness because she was basically just dogging wokeness out. Um, and then they asked, what does wokeness mean to you? What, what does it actually mean? And she sat there for about five minutes going, uh, um, mm, uh, mm, and then she was like, well, this is going to be one of those clips that gets uh, clipped up and put on social media and goes viral. You're dang skippy. Um, with, <laughs> with the understanding of this, most people, we are going to tell you to, before you say you hate something, understand what it is, mm. right? Uh, don't get on TV, national TV, your podcast, your Instagram, your, with your 10 followers, whoever. Don't get on there and say, I hate something or arrogant. I have some type of feeling towards something that you have not researched. So you said that uh, a couple seconds ago. Most people that are work, woke aren't researched at the present moment either. So we're talking to y'all too. Y'all too. Um, don't say that you believe in something that you will not research, right? So uh, our back and fail of the day is to Bethany Mandel. Um, we understand what you we really hate, baby, but uh, make sure you research it next time before you say it out loud. That's yes, Bethany. That's back in fill, fill of the day. So uh, <laughs> now we're going to go into what would you do? And I want to start with Iggy today. Oh, okay. Okay. Talk like that talk. Today, huh? So I had, <laughs> I had 15. Back to big mogul, not medium <laughs> mogul no more. Oh. I have $15,000 saved for ad, an ad budget and it's allotted for my startup, right? Um, we are about to do our first launch officially. Um, how would you break this $15,000 uh, to get the most out of these ads? So first, it's based off market research. 
because depending on the product what is market research like right. you know we, we use yeah. these terminologies I got you. let's you're break right. it down you're right so market research is understanding the demographic of of the the people you're targeting age race affinity meaning what other things do they like what other uh brands what other topics are they interested in you have to do this research and get this data back because when you start spending paid advertising you are leveraging these platforms to target specific audiences so in order to in order to determine the best platform to start your advertising on meaning is it going to be tiktok it's going to be facebook it's going to be instagram it's going to be youtube it's going to be google Understanding that demographic is going to give you the best place to start because you may be targeting an audience that's, you know, maybe in the Gen Z space and you want to go heavy on TikTok, but retarget on Instagram. Or you may be looking for uh, people older and business owners. So you may want to start on Facebook and retarget on Instagram. So it's understanding your demographic. Once you understand your, your market, you've done the research on your market, you understand, then I will allocate my budget, right? Typically, I like to put uh, 50% of whatever that budget is into the main platform and then focus the other, um, the other 50% uh, and spread that 50% out amongst the other platforms. Uh, so if it's, we start with TikTok, then we got to look at Instagram. Uh, we got to look at YouTube, got to look at Google, got to look at Facebook, maybe even Twitter, understanding that demographic and then, uh, putting that in there and retargeting people based on the people who actually spent it. So breaking it up, Based on your demographic, based on the market that you're targeting, and the platform that best serves that market, heavy on the main one and then retargeting on the other ones is how I'll do it. 50% on the main and then spread the other 50% up on the other platforms for retargeting. Siri been over here listening and writing. So, uh, another random fact. This, uh, it was going to be straight fact for the next week, but a uh, random fact. Everything that you say to Siri... Apple stores and saves for like in a file uh, for you. It's specifically for your, um, it has your, all your information and everything in that same file. They store it for a later date. It's not, it's, it's for us, but it's it, not it's about us. It's for their future. Well, not for GPT. you, but it, it, yeah, it ain't FUBU. It, it has <laughs> your, your name and everything on it. It has your IP address, everything, even the, to the, the uh, device you had. So Yikes. be careful what you say Oops. around your phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm screwed. Yeah, so that that's 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 my take. Fifteen K doing the market research first and turning off Siri. <laughs> yeah. Now Dr. Jake, we have something for you as well now. Yeah, okay. Okay, so my company, which is a tech software, ha uh, has a three point four uh five billion dollar valuation. Three point four five billion? Yes. Uh I have an offer for five hundred million for sixty percent of the company. And I stay on uh, as a board director for five years with a $1 million a year salary. Then I get 3% royalties for life. Uh, I have another offer for $200 million uh, with keeping 10% stock in the company and a 0.5% royalties um, on every product sold for life. Which would you say would be a better deal for me? Uh, neither. Because I don't have enough doubt. <laughs> 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 to determine uh, what would be a good deal. So the first thing I would say is you first need to um, hire us to run a financial analysis mm. and a financial audit, audit on where your company is truly valued for us to properly be able to determine um, what that is. The second thing you want to focus on is if you are going to stay on board what is the mission of that owner who's going to buy your company with your staff and your, uh, your employees that are on that squad? Because here's the truth. When someone buys your company, um, when somebody buys your company, there is an expectation that your executive team, as well as your staff, is going to stay on for a certain period of time until they can find a replacement or find comparable help. So you want to find people actually believe in the thing that you believe in versus tucking it into their company. For an example, one of the tech companies that we wanted to sell and we're interested in selling. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all, we get 20, 30 interested buyers every single week, but none of them say anything that make me feel like they care about our customers that are on the platform. 
They care about the staff that's going to be coming with the platform. Everything is just transactional. I want to tuck it into my portfolio. I just want to grow it. And those are the things that don't matter. And let me tell you something. All money is not good money. Talk and about when you have that leverage and you have that availability to be able to determine what your value basis is, it has to be based on more than just what your financial exit will be. Because you leaving your team that helped you helped you build that thing to become valuable in a terrible situation could ultimately cause you more pain in the future than it can. So uh, I don't have enough data to be able to determine that. If you're still questioning that, if I'm sure it wasn't billions, somebody who probably asked it was probably around a million. Mm -hmm. But um, you should reach out to us and let us do a full audit to determine that. To help you un and then uh, negotiate on behalf of you to make sure that those buyers are actually compatible with your culture and your vision. Mm. Mm. That, that was, was good, nice. Doc. And lastly, Nick. Nah, wow, well, it's gotta Nick. go last. <laughs> nah, well, I feel nah, like the best, got some the best for last. What I thought? I thought it was ladies first. Nah, it's for <laughs> Nick. Nah, nah it's Nick. Nah, it's Nick. <laughs> nah, <dog. laughs> this ain't right. So. <laughs> I it's feel left, like my though. content has. Yo, she always <laughs> makes jokes that make us all uncomfortable. You be like, oh. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Nick, and she likes being in that yeah. space. Yeah. yeah. Then I get to be in charge for like yeah, five this, minutes. She, yeah. yeah, she. that's her display of her dominance in a way, bro. Yeah. Nah, it's saying. All right. Nah, cool. it's Nick. So I feel like my content <laughs> insights have reached a ceiling or a plateau. Okay. Uh, Either I get the same amount of reach or views or lower, but there is not really much growth going on right now. I have 12,000 followers. Usually I get about two to 5,000 views on a reel and 300 to 500 likes on a post. I want to know what I can do to take my presence um, to the next level. So you reach the ceiling. Usually when I hit cap and I get burnt out, I take a break. Mm. And the best thing sometimes that you could do is just be still for a second. Right. Like, you better be still and know that I am God. Peace be, be still. Be still for a second, okay. you know, because we're constantly pumping out content every single day, right. trying to keep up with everything that's going on. But sometimes we just need to refocus on what our initial purpose was. Mm. So if if my purpose is to help people and I didn't got way off track, I need to reel it back in, okay. figure out why I actually love to do what I do and then start from there and start looking up new ideas and different things that are trending. You know, sometimes it really is best to just sit back, take a break and get your mind right. Yeah. You know, we yeah. can't always be on go all the time. That's right. Um, sometimes my ideas come when I'm not thinking about it. You know, and I've noticed that, like, when I'm constantly thinking about something, like, I just cannot create. I have mm. to be in that space. I got to be in that space. Right. You know, so bag. so Such a find out what you're doing wrong. Make a new plan. Regroup. Take that time because you're not going to get left behind. That's a lot of people are like, oh, if I'm not posting there, I'm, nobody cares anymore. Like, maybe you're out there too much. Ooh. You know, maybe less we, is more. Yeah, maybe people okay. need a break Charmin from you Ultra. right quick. Oh, so you finna drink the coconut water after you drop that? Look, <laughs> maybe people yeah. need a break from you because sometimes oh. I need a break from myself in my Ooh. head, and I gotta pause for a second and not think about anything because you're still human. So don't forget that. Stop trying to be a computer and just be human for a and, second. And, and let me add to that concept in a business construct. When we talk about taking businesses from good to great. These are great, a great business is a business that can operate without you to give you time to really lead it. Yeah. Mm. And when you are in the weeds every single day, how can you see what is coming or how can you take a break from what has happened if this does not ever stop? Talk to, yeah. still? Talk to him. And so the point that you're making is 100% factual, but it also goes back to our private banking principles. I want to make sure I'm storing up the storehouse mm -hmm. so that I can have that breathing room so that we can make the company better and a lot more efficient. And that's why it's important that you build with the future in mind versus just making money today. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, like when you get a nine to five, you get paid time off for a reason. You hear me? A lot of entrepreneurs never take breaks. We're constantly on go. We don't slow down at all, but you have to treat yourself that same way the nine to five treated you. Take a break, 
clear your mind, go on vacay, get new ideas, ask God for clarity. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't do anything without right. the divine. You know, sometimes I just don't have the answer and I need some clarity. Yeah. And right. I got to wait a few days. Yeah. But then again, after a few days, I'm, I have an aha moment, an epiphany. And I'm like, whoa, I got a new idea. Yeah. You know, I'm feeling good, feeling That's great good. about it. I like that, Nick. That's funny. Epiphany was going to be next week's. Uh, Everything was next week. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, Mogul. You're thinking, you're doing mind control and thinking in the future. I, I, I appreciate she it. She had time to I, think. I'm psychic. I'm a Pisces. But we ain't going to go there today. <laughs> as long as you don't say grandmizing. <laughs> but that's mm. it for today. I want to um, be clear. I have nothing against people that are woke. At all. I just have a thing when people put a price point on wokeness. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I just don't like when people create classes to help people become more woke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, for real, because if you woke, it's supposed to be free. Yeah, woke is for freedom. What? And let me tell you, I'm like Jesus about. being like, gather around, yeah. I'm a charge <laughs> right quick. <laughs> Jesus like, hey, hey, pull up. Yeah. It's five dollars. Five dollars before we get going. Put your coins First in the First 50 people free. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't like when people put, um, like, like, I would never charge for spiritual game that I may give because that's the thing, because wokeness is based on perception mm. how you view the world because you can always find a truth and facts to back up your perception yeah. and manipulate anything to sound or back your opinion so we got to be careful of that but y'all always over here cheesing i gotta make one announcement uh -oh. let's go let's hear it for because because i'm i listen this is gonna be news to I me because i was you. like like you was about to cry listen now, i see i seen nervous. all your teeth you were cheesing so y'all listen <laughs> good things happening this yeah. is exclusive um Y'all know how long we've been preparing for the process to creating a private equity. Oh! <laughs> so, the SEC has uh -oh. officially accepted our paperwork. Who, who the SEC is, Doc? The yes. people that be judging your finance. Security Exchange Commission. They be, they be regulating everything. Regulate. So, we officially have a uh, approved and submitted and uh, on the books regulated investment company regulated that's a celebration yeah so that's a word oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Talk hey let's hey. go that's a perfect way to end this podcast yeah and we only accept investment opportunities if you're in the private banker society let's so go. i'm excited i'm lit I'm let's lit go right now, look at god look at god <laughs> yeah yeah listen so uh, Shouts out to everybody who's tuning in live. Remember, if you want to get help from us from a consulting standpoint, meaning you want to step into your business and help you scale or help you grow to the next level, the bizcofirm.com. If you want to develop skill sets that you can utilize to build a business, to start a business, or to grow your current business, you can go to pbsdollarclub.com. We got over 260, 70 plus hours of content for you to be able to consume as well as you can get access to the curriculum that we have to help better protect yourself. We talked about a lot of stuff this episode, Oprah. We talked about acquisitions. We talked about people not knowing how to protect their money. All right, we talked about a lot of stuff. If you like what it is that you heard today, you want to make sure you tune in every Tuesday and Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Listen, share this with somebody today who you care about so they can love you tomorrow. With that being said, you got any last words, Doc, Nick? No. I'm happy. Anything is possible. Yeah, dig. <laughs> we'll see you again next episode. Share this. We love y'all, and we out. Peace. Baby. They got it bumped. Let's buy some land to build the family. That's a grown up flex. Let's see a black man winning and get so upset. This is generational, inspirational, integrative though. On the rise vertically, working like I ain't made it though. This is for my people. Locker room speeches. Listen while I'm teaching. Nails trying like a kiss. Stole it like I'm Jesus and brought it back like a rib. Had to demonstrate the blessing for people who couldn't see it. Now we building assets before we splurge our cash. We was talking about the dream, dog. We heard y'all.